Hi, it's Nancy Queen, and today I'm here to show you how to make this really cute crochet vest. It works up in about two hours. It's two granny squares. It's available in three different sizes, and it's suitable for crocheters of all skill levels. So let's dive right in. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the bell to get notified every time I post. For this project, I'm using Lion Brand Mandala Fluffy Yarn in color Mermaid. I just fell in love with those colors. And this is a jumbo weight number seven yarn from the Craft Yarn Council in a size Q hook. That's a 19, Q19 or 15 millimeter hook. And you can see how big the hook is right here. I'm also gonna use a finishing needle a pair of small scissors, and a measuring tape. There's a free PDF printable pattern, and I'll link to that and all of the materials in the description below. This vest couldn't be simpler and more fun to crochet. It's actually made by making two big granny squares. You start in the middle and you work outwards, going around and around, creating this square. You're going to make another one starting in the middle, going around, and then I'll show you how to put the whole thing together. And I'm using this really fun, colorful yarn so you don't have to change colors. It changes for you. One thing I love about these yarn cakes is that you get to decide whether you're going to start with the outside or the inside of the skein. So do I start with purple or do I start with yellow? I think I'm going to start with the purple. So I push the yellow back in and now I'm ready to go. So I will make a slip knot, which is the beginning of every crochet project. And I like to leave about a four to six inch tail. I make two loops and then I put one loop inside of the other loop. Let me show you that again. There's my two loops. Put one inside of the other and there's my slip knot. Slide that slip stitch or slip knot rather onto your hook and tighten it up around the widest part of the hook. Now you're going to chain six. We don't count the chain that's on the hook, only the chains that are off the hook. So I'm going to chain six here. And then I usually count one, two, three, four, five, six. And now I'm going to join them to form a ring. So I'm going to make a slip stitch with the hook right here in the very first stitch that I made or chain that I made. I'm going to put that in and now I'm going to yarn over and draw through both stitches on the hook or both loops on the hook. Now I've made my starting ring or my foundation ring. Now to start round one, we're going to chain three. And that chain three will count as our first double crochet. Next, we're going to create two more double crochet. So I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna work directly in that ring that I made. So yarn over, pull through the first two loops yarn over, pull through the next two loops. Now let's go on to the next double crochet. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we're going to chain three to make the corner. So I'm gonna do one, two, and three. Now I'm going to work three double crochet right into the ring. chain three more and that will make the second corner of our square. And we'll follow that by making three more double crochet into the ring.
it's time for another chain three. So one, two, and three. And then we're going to do three more double crochet into the ring. Now we're almost finished with round one, but let's take a look. You've actually created a square with these chains that make the corners and the clusters that make the sides. So we're gonna finish it up by making our last chain three. So one, two, three. And then remember that chain three that we started with? We're gonna go in the third chain one, two, three, and then go right in there and finish up with a slip stitch. And that's going to finish our corner. See, you made a beautiful square. So we're just going to keep repeating this process and go around and around. And I'm gonna show you how to do round two. So what we need to do to get to, to start round two <clears throat> is slip stitch across the stitches to the corner. So I'm gonna go into each stitch, yarn over, and then pull through the loop that's on the hook. So this slip stitch isn't gaining any height to the project, it's just moving us to where we need to be. And now I'm at the corner, I'm gonna slip stitch in there, and now I'm ready to work round two. So for round two, we are going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now that will count as the first double crochet and a chain three space, or chain three. So now we're gonna work three double crochet in that same space where the chain six is. See how it's a corner right there? We're gonna right into that space. So here's my first double crochet. Now my second double crochet, and then my third double crochet. So we've made one part of our corner. Now when we finish this third double crochet, we are going to do a chain one. So here, here's my corner already finished. And now I'm gonna work to the next corner and I'm gonna do a cluster in there. I'm gonna do three double crochet, chain three, three more double crochet, and that's gonna make the next corner. But to do that, I'm going to make a chain one first, mm -hmm. and now I'm gonna work my three double crochet. So here's my third double crochet. And then when I finish that, I'm gonna do my chain three. As you can see, this yarn goes really, really fast. I'm always unwinding it because it just eats up the yarn. You're gonna be so shocked how fast this goes. So I did my chain three, now I'm gonna do three more double crochet in this corner. And then after every cluster like this, after every corner, you're always going to work a single, a, a chain one. So here's my last double crochet in that corner. Now chain one. Now I'm gonna do another corner of three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. Are you starting to see the rhythm with this project? It really does not get any more difficult than this. It's really rhythmic, nice to do. You can kind of see where you're going. And if you feel like you don't know where you're going, set it down and take a look at what's going on with your project. It really makes a difference so that you can, when you see where you're headed, it really helps to know what's gonna be up, up next and understanding what the stitches mean. 
So that's my last chain uh, three double crochet. Now I did my chain one and look, we are more than halfway around our square and it's looking really good. I know you can do this. Okay, so now what am I gonna do on this corner? Yep, you got it. Three double crochet, chain three, and then three more double crochet. Then you'll chain one and work two double crochet in the very first corner that we started with where that chain six is. So here's my second double crochet. And now I'm going to do a slip stitch in the third chain. There it is. I'm gonna do a slip stitch right there. And you'll see my corner has been completed. There it is, looking really good. Now we're ready for round three. Now you'll start this round the same way by chaining six and then working three double crochet in the corner. Then you're going to chain one and this is where things change a little bit. You've got the sides to contend with. See how we made that chain one space? We're gonna work another cluster in that chain one space and you've got it on all four sides. So we've chained one and now we're gonna work three double crochet in that space and then chain one when we've finished it. Now here's my chain one and now I'm ready to work the next corner which as you know is three double crochet chain three, three double crochet. Now let's just take a moment to look at our progress. So we've got our corner and now we have a cluster in the center surrounded by a chain space. So now on the next round, we're going to be working two of those clusters as well as the chain spaces. And it's just going to keep increasing on the sides and you're going to do the corners the same way every time, which is the three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. So I hope that helps give you perspective on what you're doing. You'll keep working all the way around and then when you reach that final corner, you're gonna work two double crochet in that last space. And then you're going to do a slip stitch in the first, in the third chain of that chain six. And now we've finished our third round. So following the pattern, you're going to make the squares the size recommended for your size. Now I've made a couple of mini squares here so that I can show you how to finish them and weave in the yarn ends. And I'm going to, before I go on to putting them together, I'm going to weave in the tails from both of these squares. So I just use my yarn needle and I weave that in so that it's not going to come undone. You don't want to cut it at the knot or it will come undone and your project will unravel. So you always want to leave a four to six inch tail so that you can weave in those yarn ends. And then once I've woven it in, I clip it close to the work and it's done. That part is done. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to tie knots. It's all finished off. So this is my starting yarn for the beginning of the loop. You know, my, my loop in the beginning in the center. And I clip that, so that one's done. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other square. 
Now I've, we're going to join the right sides together and it's time to sew the shoulder seams. So I'm just going to take a strand of yarn and tie a knot so that that doesn't come undone. I tie a square knot. And now I'm just going to weave that yarn back and forth along the shoulder. And you want to make sure you're getting through both strands, both sides of the work when you do this. Oh, I noticed I missed that side, so let me go pick that side up. Oh, I'm going to go back out. See, I missed that side, and now I'm just going to take that out real quick and re-thread it. And now put it back in to both sides of the work. There we go. And refer to the pattern for how far in for your size you should be sewing. You want to make sure you have enough to fit this over your head. Okay, so that's done. And look, you can't see my stitching on the front of the work. It looks really nice. So now it's time to fin fasten this off. So I'm just going to go in and then I'm going to make a loop and catch that loop to knot the work. And once that's knotted, I can go ahead and weave that in. And it's not a big bulky knot. It's just a nice clean little knot and weaving in the yarn end really makes a difference. It's not going to come undone. So now I'm ready to, you know me, I like to weave in the yarn ends. I'm kind of crazy that way. But you can wait to weave in your yarn ends or you can do them one at a time as I'm doing here. And then I'm going to repeat this process on the other shoulder. I'm going to attach the yarn to the other corner, sew in a little bit, leave enough opening for the neck. So there is my neck opening. Now it's time to sew the sides. So I'm going to go down as far as shown in the pattern for your size. And then you're just going to sew a seam on this side and a seam on this side. And I'm going to do it exactly the same way. I'm going to go through both pieces tie a square knot and you want to make sure when you tie your knot you leave about four to six inches so you can weave in that tail and then I'm just going to sew back and forth through both pieces and I'm just going to go all the way down to the corner and then fasten that off now you're ready to turn your project right side out and ta-da, it is completed and it's looking really good. There's your armhole openings, there's your neck opening. And let's take a look here at how my daughter styled her vest. Hi, I'm Hadley and I'm styling right now this vest that my mom made for me. So, I have on this black turtleneck and I think the black really nicely shows off the colors in the vest in like an elegant way. And then these cream wide leg pants. And right now I'm wearing sparkly Crocs, but I would actually wear these docks with it because I think it adds to like the fun, funness of the vest. And then I have these earrings that are little hearts that I bought from my friend Renee's Etsy shop. So yeah, this is how I would style it. I think this is a great outfit for like hanging out in a coffee shop or something. In the video, I made a mini size and then we decided let's throw it on the dog. So here's Maggie modeling her sweater. Now this is not something I would put on her every day because her paws get stuck in it, but doesn't she look adorable? And I hope you enjoyed this. I will see you in the next video.